the Prop Lions Football Review with Coach J.D. Wallace. Brought to you by Stivers, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep of Prattville, Trustmark Bank, and Durban Auto Parts. Well, hello, Lion Nation, and welcome into week four of the Private Lions Football Review. I'm Will Barrett, joined as always by our head football coach, J.B. Wallace, looking back on last week's shutout victory over the Tuscaloosa County Wildcats 30-0 at our temporary home over in Wetumpka. Coach, congratulations on a great region win. Thank you, man. It was a much-needed win. You know, anytime you get those region wins, man, they add up, and it helps you reach your goal at the end of the season. So uh, that was a huge night for us as a team to get that second region win of the year. So uh, we're excited about that, and we we focusing on the next. You had mentioned previously Tuscaloosa County comes in. Um, they were 0-3 coming in, but they had, but there was no doubt that they had skill players and, and talent on the offensive line, defense line, and they did. And uh, there was it was a hard fought battle in the trenches, but you got out. The offense came out clicking and fi- and came out 14 zip right out of the gate really quickly. And I know they had to set the tone for the rest of the night. It did. We challenged the offensive line again that we wanted to run the ball. Um, you know they were in some odd fronts and things like that, and and you know that's something that we hadn't seen a lot of this year. So we challenged our O line to, to come out and be aggressive and reestablish the line of scrimmage again, and and they did. You know Tristan Blackman with another huge night, um, 169 yards I believe um, on the night with a touchdown, 89 yard run, mm-hmm. um, which was huge. You know setting the tone. Um, we had other guys like Landon Smith who who were able to get involved a pretty good bit um, Friday night. And, uh, you know, getting him some touches, and he shows, you know, that he could be elusive with the ball as well. Uh, Christian Alexander with a huge touchdown yeah. run, which was amazing, you know, to, to, to get that young guy the ball. You know, a sophomore that's been really playing well this year for us, made mm-hmm. big plays two weeks back-to-back. Um, so we're really excited about where he could go with it. And, uh, of course, K.J. Blue, you know, every opportunity we can get him the ball is always good offensively. So running the ball was going to be crucial for us versus them, and I, I think we handled that well. Uh, no doubt. Yes, sir. Uh, in the throwing game, of course, Gavin, 132 yards passing, um, managed the game well again, made some very good decisions. Um, you know, we had a plethora of receivers, receivers touching the ball once again. Uh, I think we had five different receivers uh, Friday night that, that got catches. Uh, Brody had a long catch, of course, and we got Tanner Eamon involved early. Uh, you know, so guys like that, man, they're just coming along and making some things happen for us offensively. Absolutely, Coach. 30 points on offense, always impressive. But what's maybe even more impressive is that zero on the other side of the ball. You know, I'm going to tell you this. Th- this is what I know, man. That That is a difficult task, you know. And that's one of our goals to get a shutout. But, man, it's not as easy, especially with offenses today, um, with what they're capable of doing and some mm-hmm. of the formations they line up in. But, man, our offense, man, I mean, our defense uh, with Coach Bullen, that coordinator, uh, man, they did a great job maintaining that, that shutout and, you know, getting the ball out. We got an interception. Well, which was huge, man, and that's something that they've been harping on for the last few weeks, Ch- takeaways, takeaways, got to get the ball out. And um, you saw our guys taking chances, trying to rip the ball out as well, but getting that interception was huge. I think we had a huge night on our defensive front. We reestablished a line of scrimmage up there as well. Um, Elijah Brown had a great night, Callahan Minor. Uh, Jay Lou had a great night. All those guys, man, they, they played well. Um, we had very solid secondary play, mm-hmm. very good secondary play. And once again, if you can see the rotation at corner, man, we got four or five different corners in the yeah. mix, and they're all playing well. Um, safeties are very, very consistent in making things happen. So overall, you know, to get that shutout uh, Friday night was was great for that group. That was fantastic, Coach. And, and you mentioned folks like uh, Callahan Miner. You mentioned folks like Elijah Brown, like EJ Brown. These folks are getting better and better and better each week, especially I noticed uh, 99, EJ Brown really coming into his own. Yeah, man, he's starting to figure it out. Very talented young man. He's got a great get off, uh, very explosive. And, you know, to see him get, get in the backfield and make those tackles for losses, I mean, that's his game. He's capable of doing that. And, and that roof, is that, that ceiling for him is high. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to see him get better every week, and he's going to be able to do things, you know, in two or three weeks that we probably hadn't seen yet, you know, once he starts to get that under his belt. But, uh, man, he's got great leadership up there, though. You know, those seniors and those juniors, man, they're good leaders up front. Jahari Scott. You know, his name has popped up a lot. He yeah. plays some physical football for us, man. He's, he's had a very good two weeks, um, so we're great to get him involved. And, um, you know, the the guys like Josh Williams that come in, man, Josh comes in. He can play end. He can play tackle. Um, we do a whole lot of stuff with him. Um, you know, you look at him on paper, and he's probably not Elijah Brown on paper because he's not 300 and something pounds. Right. But, man, he understands what we want him to do, and, and he's been a very effective in our rotation. 
Coach, this team is 4-0 now for the first time since 2007. And it's hard to believe that through all the championship runs that, that, this, that this program's had, that this is the first time they've been actually 4-0 since 2007. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't realize it either. And, you know, I was here in 07 mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, seeing all the success that Coach Clark brought to the program then and how that thing was gelling. But man, that's that's a interesting fact, you know. But, you know, with that being said, you know, there there was a lot of different opponents that were played back then. You right. know, that, yeah. But but still, you know, that's huge for this team to come out and and to be able to be the first team to go 4-0 uh, since 2007. Man, they're very deserving. You know, these guys, man, they, they're humble. They work hard. Um, they love each other. They play hard for each other. They embrace the moment, mm -hmm. and that's one thing that's good about this group. You know, so far no moment has gotten too big for them, um, and they come out and they they want they genuinely want each other to be to, to be the best. They genuinely want their brother to play well, and that's what it takes. You know, to play at this level, um, and and to be successful. Well, it certainly showed homecoming night this past Friday as the Lions rolled to a 30 to zero win over the Tuscaloosa County Wildcats. Let's take a look at those highlights now. That's in town. Rigdon takes a first down snap, passes across the middle. This one's complete at the 45-yard line. Tanner. To Tanner Eatman to the 49-yard line. Another first down for the Lions. Good to see Tanner getting involved early. First and 10 Lions from the 49. Rigdon the pass again. Throws it up, complete again to Eatman. Eatman on his feet across the 35 down to the 30-yard line. Dragon tacklers down to the 27-yard line. Another first down to move. Opening drive, and here's a gift to Blackman up the middle. He's got a lot of room across the 15. Blackman stumbling down to the 10-yard line. First and goal, Prattville. Rigdon from the shotgun. One receiver split to either side. Gavin rolls to that side. He's going to roll to the end zone. Gavin yeah. did a touchdown. Prattville. Set two on the far side, one on the near. As he gives it up to Blackman. And Blackman's got room up the middle. He's got room. He's going to oh have my. his first down at more. 40, 45, 50. Blackman in the foot race. He's not going to be caught. He's going all the way. Tristan Blackman. Ooh, 89 son. yards. Touchdown, Prattville. Good snap. Rigdon wants to throw. Rolls to his right. Now fires down, fires down the middle. Brody Bowman pulls it down <laughs> at the 49-yard line. We 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 did that. Sam. Wants yeah. to go, but he is going to be stuffed, Sam sacked Cook. by Sam Cook. Here is Rigdon dropping the pass. Now firing it short. He's got Blue trying to make a trying to make something happen across the 40. God. Gets his first down to the 38-yard line. KJ Blue with some 50 running after the catch for the Lions from the Wildcat 40. Rigdon full house backfield. Just going to give this one. It's Smith on the carry. And he's nice breaking cut. free. And he's in the 20. He's going to go. Touchdown, Prattville. Wow. Yeah. Janela kicks this one away. Brought out from the goal line once again. He's back foots in there every mm -hmm. time. And he is crushed Boom. at the 15 yard line by Boom. three or four defenders led by Gavin Underwood. Third and 10 now for the Tuscaloosa County Wildcats. Dotson wants to throw from his own 16. He's, he's in going down. Pressure. He is going down. He's picked up Boom. and dropped to the canvas. Dotson from the shotgun play action in some trouble he is going down in the backfield once again the Lions defense swarms in the back second and ten Rigdon four receivers in the set gives it up to Blackman again he's got room up the middle across the 30 he's still on his feet dragon tackles across the 20 puts his head down still going wow. across the 20 to the 19 yard line first and ten Prattville great story kick is up from Genoa it's got the distance and it is good good yeah good Two seconds to play before the half, and Janola punches it through. Wow. Dotson wants to throw. Has it intercepted uh -oh. at the 35-yard line. Back to the 20. Cuts it back to the 15, and stays on his feet to the 16-12-yard line. Dotson, four receivers, low snap, ball, ball on the ground. ground. And he's going to go down in the backfield, back at the 38-yard yeah. line. Big loss. Dotson from the shotgun, pulls it down, gives to Jackson up the middle, and he is stuffed. Boy, is he ever stuffed. EJ Brown. Brown at the line of scrimmage. Janola punts this one away. Line drive, wobbly spiral. What a nice punch. Yes. And down at the 18-yard line. Yeah. Take oh, ball's loose, ball's on the ground. Oh. Dotson has to fall on it back at the three-yard line. On his away. Oh, Blue, Blue's got a chance to return this. That dude, man. From the Tuscaloosa 40, cuts it back up to the 30. There Blue we go. To the 20. Blue to the 15. Taken down at the 10. Oh, Inside wow. the 10 down to the seven yard line. It's first and goal. Rigdon rolls. Wants to throw. Fires it in, fires it to the two. Into the end zone. Touchdown, Prattville. Harry cuts it to the inside. And he's going to go down at the 15 yard line. And now the game comes to an end. Your yeah. final score, Prattville 30. 
Tuscaloosa County 0. Lions improved to 4 0, 2 0 in region play. Coach, now it's time for our Buffalo Rock Pepsi player of the game. And I got to feel like in a shutout victory, it's going to go to somebody on defense. <laughs> well, you just never know. Uh, you know, it could go to a lot of different people. And we did have a shutout defensively. Um, offensively put up 30 points, was, which is a big night. Um, and I like the opportunity to where it could be multiple people mm -hmm. that could be the Pepsi player of the game. But this week's Pepsi player of the game is going to be Callahan Minor, uh, defensive lineman. Uh, plays edge for us. I mean, he had uh, eight total tackles, had a couple of sacks, man, tackle, tackle for losses. He was all over the place. But uh, Callahan Minor is a Pepsi player of the game. You know, I coached him when he was in fourth grade. It's probably the reason why he's so good. You know, I was wondering where he got his background from. Now it's making sense. It's, it's all about that fourth grade yeah. year. Despite that, he's become a great football player. So, <laughs> congratulations to Callahan Minor, your Buffalo Rock Pepsi player of the game. Welcome back to the Private Lions Football Review. Coach, it's time for everybody's favorite segment. It's Inside the Lions Cage, and you have brought us another another offensive lineman. What are we going to do about that? Another offensive lineman inside the Lions Cage. Uh, definitely one of the leaders up front as well. Um, but I think it would be a great opportunity for, for the community and the Lions fans to get to meet these guys. Uh, O-linemen, they don't get their names in the paper a lot, mm -hmm. but this is his chance to shine. So I want to see if he's going to make the best of it. So Zane Viscom is inside the Lions Cage today. Let's go inside the lion's cage with Zane Viscom. Okay, Lion Nation, it's time to go inside the lion's cage. And today we're inside the lion's cage with another one of the big guys up front. We're talking about senior offensive lineman Zane Viscom. Zane, thanks for spending some time with us today. Glad to be here. Um, yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Go on. <laughs> the offensive linemen are... are you know, we talked to him. We talked to one last week, one of your buddies, Brian Moody, mm -hmm. and he had a lot of personality. And he said he's probably got the most personality in the offensive line. And we're trying to make sure that's not the case today. Ooh, that might be the case today. I get a little <laughs> nervous all the time. I'm, I'm a quiet person on, on the uh, O line, probably. You've always been quiet? Yeah, I've always been quiet. You let I, your... I only talk when I have to, you know. That's okay. Or out of anger, you know, <laughs> usually. What's the angriest you've ever been at the offensive line? Uh... May have been last night. I mm -hmm. <laughs> was not happy when I pulled and I had to turn left. And I see everyone running down there, and I'm like, oh, I got that five-yard line. I was ready to score, put that put that ball in the end zone. But, yeah, I was was not happy coming off that field. You've been playing you've been playing private lines football since you were in seventh grade. Yes, You're sir. six years in the program now. Uh, what would you say is your greatest, your greatest memory on the field? Greatest memory? Oh, that's a hard one, actually. Um... I probably have to go back to seventh grade. Oh, really? Yeah, all the way back then when we went undefeated. Mm -hmm. We got the banner up because we were facing a team that had both seventh and eighth graders. And, you know, we came out there and we um, totally forgot the score. That's probably pretty bad. We totally forgot the score, but uh, we we went out there and we are we let us cuss on this. No. Okay. We we kicked their butts. <laughs> we kicked their butts. Yeah, and uh, I just remember everyone being so happy. You know, yeah. We all went undefeated, and yeah, that's just something I'm gonna cherish. Absolutely. And now you got a team 4-0. Oh, yeah. First time undefeated at, at this point in the season since 2007. That's mm -hmm. got to feel That's pretty crazy. good. That's crazy. Yeah. I didn't know about that until uh, KP, uh, Coach KP said something about it. I was like, wow. Well, now you got was, something to protect. You know, I was shot, you know, Yeah. Coming off of last season. So you've been playing this game for six years. You've been having pregame rituals and warm-ups for six years. Have you developed any kind of superstition or any kind of habit that you got to do before the game? Um... Any superstitions? I don't. I don't like to talk at all to anybody. Where you're like getting. We didn't pick that up. Yeah, I don't talk to nobody. You know, people are joking around. I don't. I don't get involved in that. I'm just usually focused on the song I'm listening to or um, getting all my stuff ready, getting ready to strap up and go. Mm -hmm. You know. What would you say? Okay, <clears throat> let's get off the football field now mm -hmm. and get and get into private life. Okay. What is the go-to place for food in this town for you? Well, that's a good one. Um, 
I've been eating a lot of Moe's lately. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Moe's Southern Kitchen. Oh, God, you get that, that home market burrito. Okay. Loaded up with a bunch of... um. So that's your go-to. Yeah, You're probably. probably a steak guy. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm a chicken. Oh, a chicken put, guy. Put chicken on there. Oh, okay. It's great, yeah. Put a little queso on the... Put a queso in the burrito. Yeah, it's a... So, so queso in the burrito is the, t- yeah. is the ticket. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, let's say... Let's say you're stranded on a desert island, right? Like Lost. You probably don't know what Lost is. But you're stranded on a desert island and you're going to have three things with you. What are the three things you're going to have with you? Your food, water, and shelter are all provided for, but you can take three things. Three things? Ooh. Oh, that's a good question. Oh, my gosh. Mm. I don't know. Probably like entertainment. Probably like... Nintendo Switch, probably, if I'm staying out there. And, um, can I bring a buddy of mine? Sure. You taking Moody? I'm taking Moody. <laughs> Me and Moody, we're going we're gonna to take over that island. <laughs> we'll take it over, start a new country and all that. And, uh, what's the name of your country? Uh, what was that name? He came up with a name before. I can't remember it. We'll have to, we'll have to bring that to the, the board. Okay. Take it to the board. Yeah, take it to the board. We'll come back to that. <laughs> Okay, well, this is coming to an end in May. You will walk out of Prattville High School into the next chapter of life. Mm-hmm. How do you want the people around here to remember Zane Viscom? As we remember that, that cool guy, you know, not, um, uh, that guy you just go up to, talk to, and have a good time with. That's all I want to be remembered for, you know. And what is your idea of the best time? I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Uh... Probably just hanging out with buddies, okay. going riding on a dirt road with a, a side by side. Probably. I got a lot of songs about that. Mm-hmm. Oh, we listen to all those on the dirt road. <laughs> all right, Zane. Well, this has been memorable for me. I know it's been memorable for you. Mm-hmm. Now, well, the way we end this every every episode is with uh, you singing the fight song for the world right into that camera right there. Oh boy. So I'm gonna clap you in. One, two, one, two, three, four, and then you rip it, okay? Oh, about to go that right was there. not it. Oh, that was not right it. There. I was getting ready. <laughs> He's excited. He's ready. Zane's ready. Always ready. Okay, here we go. One, two, one, two, three, four. Hooray for Prattville. Hooray for Prattville. Someone in the sands yelling, hooray for Prattville. One, two, three, four. Oh, tell us who you're yelling for. Prattville, that's who Oh, you're yes! Woo! Zane Viscom, you did it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Zane Viscom. being honest. Yeah, man. <laughs> Coach, last segment we got here before we before we take off a four and zero start, a uh, lot of momentum, a lot of people talking about this team, a lot of buzz right now, and we're about to find out what this team is really all about as we go into Hoover this week. Definitely gonna be a great challenge uh, for this group, man. Absolutely, uh, you know. But I think that you know they're gonna be up for it. They're gonna be ready to play. Um, they they've never talked ahead of the opponent that that we've had. You know, it's always been about who we have on Friday. And uh, so, you know, this is a big one. You don't have to tell them. They know it. They know the history of this place versus Hoover. Um, so it's going to be a big big game. It's going to be huge for the program. Um, but it could set the tone for the rest of the season. So, um, you know, our guys got to have a great week of preparation. No doubt. Anytime Prattville and Hoover gets together, it is something special. All the way back to the to the, 2000, to the mid-2000s where this rivalry really kind of got kicked off in the state championship levels. And now we're meeting in the region. Um, and it, even though it's even though it's just it's just a regular it's a regular season game it's not a state championship game but it's got that feel to it when anytime you you know they're across the line from you it is I can recall the last time we played Hoover uh, 2021 and that was a huge game and it went down to the wire that night mm-hmm. um, I can only imagine if this one's going to be the same I know they're going to be a coached up bunch um, I know their players are going to be prepared just like ours so you know it's going to come down to who's going to want it more and who's going to make the the least mistakes that's what it's going to come down to and you got to protect the football and those are going to be things that we're going to be talking about all week um, because I, I truly think you know the team that makes the fewest mistakes as far as even just lining up right and, mm-hmm. and not fumbling the ball and, and things like that it's going to come down to that and special teams is going to be crucial. Well coach we're four games in the season now we've been up to the Birmingham area already to face Oak Mountain and this Lion Nation has traveled really well every time so we're expecting the same kind of results this week. Yeah our, our, our fans man our community they have, they have not 
uh, taking a week off mm -hmm. as well. They've been at it all year, no matter where we play, even our home away from home. You know, they've shown up there and they made it home. And uh, so uh, we're excited about that. We're excited about the 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 morale or whatever the, of the program or whatever. So I think uh, Friday night is going to be a huge night for Prattville football, and especially at the Hoover Met when when we have more fans there than Hoover, yeah. because that's the expectation. That is know, the expectation. for us to come there and they, we make that our field as well. Kickoff next next Friday, seven o'clock at the Hoover Met Prattville against Hoover. Make sure you're there. Make sure you get there early. Make sure you get your seat. It's going to be a great night of football. So, Coach, uh, congratulations on another great week. We look forward to coming back here next week and talking more of the same. Absolutely. It's going to be a great one. For the Mills are behind the camera. For Coach J.B. Wallace, I'm Will Barrett saying good night. God bless. And go Lions. The Prop Lions Football Review with Coach J.B. Wallace. Brought to you by Stivers, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep of Prattville, Trustmark Bank, and Durban Auto Parts.